Hello, welcome to today's Specialist Finance webinar. So first of all, very briefly, who are Crystal Specialist Finance? We have over 80 lenders on panel across our six business sectors, so commercial, bridging, buy-to-let, residential, secured loans and development finance. We are dedicated to the intermediary, um, including training, BDM visits, case management. So we believe firmly in education. We believe that by giving you the tools you need to assist your clients, we can all do more business. Uh, we are multi-award winning, and as you can see there, we were extremely proud to receive the Best Specialist Distributor Award at the recent Bridging and Commercial Awards um, held down in London a couple of weeks ago. And as a team here, we've got over 200 years collective specialist finance experience. The senior management team have been in the business now for almost 15 years. So that we've seen many scenarios that, that hopefully that you'll come across with your clients. And then our plan, of course, is to help you complete more business. So our, our motto there, making specialist finance crystal clear. They're our passionate motto, um, obviously you trust us, we need to deliver on that. We assist you on every case, we're only as good as the last one we do. Picking a few little bits out, um, speed, service and flexibility really are the key that we, that we want to take away from this. We believe we should assist you in completing more business, not make things more difficult for you. Bridging finance is an area where we feel we're particularly strong. It's always been a very big part of our business, um, basically a short term loan, so anything for up to 12 months. But some lenders are even pushing the boundaries on that, maybe going to, to 24 or 36. So again, perfect for your auction purchases or, or where you're looking to buy below market value. Or even a, a heavy refurbishment, turning a property into something else. Development, um, traditionally people think of development as being a bare plot of land and, and we're looking at spade in the ground development. But this can also take the form of conversions. With the shortage of housing stock in the UK, many people are now looking to, to add value to sites or to redevelop existing units. So again, buy to let, landlords are looking to convert properties into HMOs. Dependent on the level of work needed, this may be more suitable for development finance. And this is available for, for overseas clients and trusts, as well as UK clients. We understand how specialist finance works, and we fully do appreciate the true breadth and depth of products available in the market. We currently have over 80 lenders on panel, so we truly understand the lender's appetite. We understand their processes. We know how to get the deals done quickly and efficiently. And we bring that to you. We explain the process, we explain the timescales and what we need you to do. And we explain what we will do in order to get that case completed. Common areas that we see cases include tight completion deadlines, unusual property types, income sources, HMOs, etc. So again, some things there might ring a bell with you and, and you might recognize a case you've done recently. Other ones you might look at and think, well, I don't get cases like that. Not a problem at all. When you do, hopefully now you'll know where to turn. So hopefully that's been useful. And hopefully you've seen some solutions for your clients in there as well. The key message, let's find a solution. We've seen most scenarios before. And if we haven't, we're quick to learn. Let's find the problem, let's fix it. Let's get the solution for you, for your client, and let's all do business. Contact details are on there. If you have any questions, please get in touch with us. If you want to discuss a deal or a scenario, please contact us there, website, email, phone, whatever is easier for you. And look out for future instalments where we'll be touching on more topics and we'll hopefully keep you abreast of what's happening within the market. Thank you, Chris. So welcome to Mint Bridging's presentation to Crystal. I'm going to talk you through Mint's offering in the marketplace and how we help our borrowers and brokers get the right solutions. So we have a team of around 35 people within our office, most of whom have property experience and or lending experience as well. They've either been property developers, they've worked in banks, they've worked in finance, or they've worked in the legal side of conveyancing. We've grown our team to make sure that we can offer each borrower that comes across to us a handcrafted bespoke product that will suit their individual project needs. That's all about growing the right relationships with brokers and finding the right solution. And we believe that we've got the right mix in our office to do that. So we provide finance from up to five million pounds. Our lowest loan amount that we will fund is a hundred thousand pounds. Uh, we will look at everything from bridging finance, refurbishment loans, development finance, and also commercial finance as well. No two loans are the same. No two deals are the same. So our offering to the client isn't either. So we are privately funded. There is no banking line behind us, which allows us slightly more flexibility than other lenders in the industry who possibly do have banking funds behind them. It's a little bit more restrictive. You have to go through certain amounts of tick boxes before you can actually get the cash out the door. A lot of our funders sit in house <clears throat> so we can have a conversation with them about 
you know, different things that they may take a view on. If there's a development that maybe they haven't got, they need to extend the loan to GDV, they can have a look at it. If it's something that they like, then they're happy to flex it as and when we can. So we also believe in responsible lending. Uh, We're very transparent with everything that we do. We're a family run business and we understand that every deal that comes across to us is obviously something that the borrower has thought about for a long time. It's something that's gonna change their lives or it's something that they're doing for a living. And we want to make sure that we impart our values into every single deal and relationship that we're building. So I'm gonna go through our development products that we have. We've split it down into probably four or five key areas we've broken it down into refurbishment which we've done as light refurbishment medium refurbishment and heavy refurbishment uh, the light refurbishment is probably typically a, a revamp of a an asset that you've purchased it could have been auction it could be something that you've seen in the marketplace that you've been able to snap up at a, a low price whatever it is we will contribute up to 100 percent of the works We typically will go up to 70% on the asset, providing that the loan to GDV will allow that. We can go up to 70% loan to GDV. Typically, we'd we'd rather sit around 65% just because you've got enough headroom in there to account for the marketplace if there's any drops, things like that, and it keeps the borrower nice and safe in their asset that they've purchased as well. So a light refurb product is available for houses or flats. We'll accept all applicants, credit profile, happy if a client has any arrears or ccjs on there as long as the explanations can be provided and we can see that it's not going to affect the exit at the end so if exits refinance someone's got colorful credit history shall we say we will want to know how we're going to actually get off that deal how we're going to get off that loan what is the exit who are you looking to go to and can you back up the fact that they'll accept somebody who has a slightly more colorful credit for profile Uh, With light refurbishment, they don't necessarily have to have any experience. The light refurb product is typically designed for somebody who, as I said, they're not doing any structural works to the property. They're just looking at aesthetic stuff, really, maybe a new kitchen, a new bathroom, things like that. They're going to spruce it up with painting. You might be doing some rewiring of electrics, things like that. But there's nothing structural. There's no planning permission needed. And the refurb costs are not going to exceed £100,000. Monitoring on that, we never test the loan to value, which I'll discuss in more detail as I go along the presentation. It may be that a monitoring surveyor is sent in to check it, or it could just be that the borrower sends us images of the work that they've done. Dependent on the cost of works, it could all be given in one drawdown or it may be staged. It would just depend on the individual case that came across. Our medium refurb product is pretty similar to the one before. We will go to 70% loan to GDV again. They will be properties where structural changes possibly are required and planning amendments, things like that. You may be applying for planning permission, but the costs don't exceed £250,000. On this product uh, for medium, ideally I'd like the the borrower to own their own home if that's possible or I'd like to have a reason as to why they don't. Maybe they just flip and trade properties all the time. That could be what they've decided to do. Uh, I just want to understand as much as I can about the borrower. Again, no experience necessary. We'll do houses or flats. The same applies with the credit profile. I'll have a look at it. It just all has to make sense to me. And then as long as it does, not just to me, to the underwriters as well, because I won't be underwriting everything, um, we're happy to proceed on that. And again, up to 100% of the costs would probably typically limit the day one amount to 70% of the purchase price, just so that we've got enough room in there. Uh, Heavy refurbishment is another product. Again, any asset as in houses or flats. Credit profile, same. We just want an explanation. On this one, we would be looking at costs that are over £250,000 to do the works on it. It doesn't matter what the purchase price is. There will be structural changes to this property and there will be planning permission required. Now, on this one, what we would probably do is the funds would be released in a number of drawdown stages as per their schedule of works. That's what we'll look at. We will have them fund in advance and we will refund it back in arrears for them. Again, it can be done on a light touch monitoring report or it could be a full monitoring report. That will depend when the asset manager has gone out, the QS has gone out to meet the borrower face to face and just see what they're doing with the project. But whatever we can do to structure that development product that will suit that individual borrower's needs, we will be doing. 
And then we have our ground up development finance. And I think it's probably key to note at this point, we funding arrears, I touched on it before with the three refurbishment products. We never test the loan to value at any point during a development. What we're looking for when we're looking for a, a developer that's wanting to come with Mint is how are they getting out of it? What is the research that they've done? You know, if they're going to be a property developer, what research have they done in the area? I'm going to be looking at what they've done before, why they've decided to do it there, what research they've done, why they think their GDV is achievable, how they're going to be marketing it. Have they done research on the schools in the area? What is it that's going to drive people to want to live in the area that they're building? And in the event that they're not experienced, I'm going to park them to one side. I'm going to look at the team that they've positioned around them. And I'm going to be looking at how strong is that team to get this project finished. Uh, we're happy to fund first time developers. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as well when I go into the development products. And with your experienced developers, I suppose I'm looking at how many products, uh, projects sorry, have they got on the go at the minute? I wouldn't like them to have more than two on the go just because I think that their focus could be diluted and maybe they're not concentrating enough. I think we're in a bit of a sticky time with the market at the moment and what's going to get sold, what's going to move. And I think that rather than spreading yourself too thinly, do everything of high quality, get it out. So I'd want to see what they're doing. Their experienced developers, we can again, structure the product to suit them. I know that they're, they're probably more market savvy. They've been about, they've had a look at what they can get and they're probably looking at the rate and what they can drive down and where they can cut costs, obviously to maximize profits. I'm absolutely fine with that. As I've said, we can offer a bespoke and flexible product for them. I just need to understand as much as possible about that client. I'd like to see a schedule of works. If we're looking at a deal, I'd like to see costings. If they've had a QS go out, if they've got any architect drawings, the more information I can get day one is better because it helps me paint a better picture. We want to see an asset and liability statement for each borrower. And that's not to say that we want to go and secure against every asset that they've got. That's not the case at all. What an asset and liability statement is helping us do is paint a picture and a profile of this borrower. How strong are they? How reliable are they? What does their payment structure look like? What does their credit management look like? How do they manage the credit? You know, if if a build was to go wrong, what access do they have to other cash? Because as you know, we'll all know there's cost overruns on builds sometimes. You may run over in time, you may run over in money. And how are we going to get that borrower off? when we're looking at an asset and liability statement is how strong is that borrower? So if there were any cost overruns or any time overruns and the client had to access extra cash above and beyond the contingency that we've allowed, where is that gonna come from? Where is their liquidity or, or asset that we could release further cash from if it got to that? We do always allow a contingency in our development facilities. Uh, that does allow for any cost overruns, but obviously it's limited typically to around 10%. We usually add a little bit on, even if the borrower has one in their contingency as well. But if it's, it's going to ruin a deal or it's going to kill a deal and we can't get it there, again, we can look at it in a different way to make that work. So on your development finance products that you'd be offering to your clients on behalf of Mint, if we were to be doing a ground up development, we would look at schemes of up to eight houses and up to 12 apartments that were being built. Typically, loan to GDV, we'd go up to 65%. Wouldn't really want to go higher than that unless it was an experienced uh, developer or a first time developer that had stacks of assets in the background. You know, I could stretch it because I'm writing the risk really. I'm mitigating it. We never test the loan to value at any point. As I've said in the build, we have a QS or monitoring surveyor that will impart themselves into the developer's build team. They'll also work very, very closely with a portfolio manager within Mint, all of which I've mentioned them before have property experience. You know, one has built everything from one dwelling up to, I think, 250 dwellings for Crosby Homes. He knows, you know, I can put a schedule of works in front of him and he comes back to me within about 20 minutes to say, yeah, that old rough high level looks like it can be built or it's a little bit light so it allows us to go back to the borrower to the broker to have a conversation just to make sure that everybody's aware and and to sound out any issues or stumbling blocks that may come about at the beginning but as i said once a loan has drawn down they will be working with the borrower the borrower will be communicating with them just to explain where they're up to to get the next drawdown and also i think it's key to point out at this stage 
not every single loan is going to go to plan. Not every single development or, or any other product is going to run to plan. If it did, then everyone would be happy and life would be easy all the time. So our portfolio managers build very, very strong relationships with the brokers and the borrowers. The reason for that is so that the borrower feels they can pick up the call, the phone, have a phone call with the portfolio manager to say, look, this isn't so good at the moment. That allows us to manage funding in-house and to understand that this one may run over a little bit. We're managing it. We're not going to throw ridiculous costs onto borrowers. We're also not going to damage any broker's relationships that they've got with the borrowers because we're going to be speaking to all parties just to explain what the situation is to get everybody to the point where the loan is still very, very profitable for the developer, the lender gets the cash in, we're protecting the broker's relationship with their client and that they want to go again and hopefully ask you to come to move with that as well. So first time developers, I touched on it before, it's the same, we'll do up to eight houses and 12 flats. Probably I'd like to see them do one or two houses on a scheme at first, but again, it will depend on the team that they've put around them. If that team is very, very strong and we know, you know, we can get collateral warranties, we've got a fixed price contract, it's all making sense, there's research that's been done into the area, the borrower can almost be pushed to the side and we just look at the team that's in there and if it can be finished, if there's enough developer's profit in there and the costings are on track, then why would we not do it? You know, we're always looking at a way to help people get their project underway and first time developers, we've had a lot of success with them. They really buy into the offering that they get with Mint and the wealth of experience that they've got within the team that they end up speaking to. They enjoy the QS that, you know, their input into their build because it's like an extra set of eyes, somebody else that's making sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and just somebody else casting their eyes over it with a professional opinion who can say, yep, this is great or they can throw a couple of questions into the mix to make people ask, which we found has been really valuable. So I'm going to talk about a couple of case studies that we've done just so you can see what kind of loans Mint have funded. So there was a development that a developer came into the office to speak to us. They were a fairly local developer to our offices in Altrincham and they had acquired a site in the northwest. They had no experience in building it out. The site was in a great area. It was a very affluent area in the northwest and an up and coming area. And we worked really closely with them each step of the way. We offered them a handcrafted facility that allowed them to fund the new build of five three bedroom townhouses. Um, we gave them an initial advance of £160,000 to purchase the land. The total loan was £900,000. They had that money for around 10 months. It was out at a rate of 095 at the time and the QS worked with them. They thoroughly enjoyed working with the QS and they said that the help that they gave, that the QS gave them on that development allowed for all of the work to be delivered on time and on cost to a very high quality, which resulted in a quick sale for each property following completion. That property, the, that scheme, sorry, actually finished around October times and by the 8th of December, it was probably September actually, by the 8th of December, every single plot had been sold, contracts exchanged for them to move on. So it was a fantastic build, fantastic developer. They've also come back to us for some more, which is good. Now we had another development funding request that was in the southeast of the country. Planning permission had been secured on this one. They wanted a loan of £350,000. Uh, the vacant land for the development was formerly a disused filling station. So looking at that, we knew there was a possibility of land contamination that needed to be addressed. We needed to understand what was actually under there. Was it tanks that needed capping and filling or, you know, had that already been done? So our in-house lawyer worked with the borrowers. They worked with both sides of the legal team to make sure that we could get all of those conditions satisfied, make sure that the funders were happy with it. Uh, The fit and finish of this property was to a really high standard. There were very strong sales in the local area when we looked at it, which typically we may have moved away from a contaminated site. Um, But the borrower had done all of his research into it. He expected it all to sell off plan. There were a couple, I think, I think there was a deposit already had been received for one of the the properties that they were building. Um, And yeah, we were happy to fund that. And that is still being built at the moment. So one of the properties has been a deposit taken on that, I think, performance bond. Our next one was development finance that was for in the southeast again. They wanted 
£850,000 over 11 months. Again, this was to build five new ground up properties. It was like a terrace block of houses. Our quantity surveyor again met with the borrower, started working very closely. There were some planning conditions on this. Again, it was it used to be a, a site that typically had vans and cars on it, needed a soil report, needed some ground investigation. There were possible conservation issues around the border because there were bushes that they couldn't do use certain machinery at certain times of the year on. So RQS worked with them, set out a bill schedule. We were offered that on a first charge basis. We enabled them to get the build done, sent them the first drawdown uh, of cash. QS worked with them, thought it was a fantastic build, fantastic borrower to work with. And those properties got built and the borrower actually retained them into his portfolio. Because that's what he was, his plan was to do. I think he would have sold them very easily, but he decided to do that. Okay, so the process with Mint, if you have a deal that comes across to us from Crystal, is we have great relationships with staff within Crystal who have great relationships with our underwriters. We work very closely with all of our introducers and we build great relationships, which I touched on before as well. Um, once the deal does come across to Mint, what happens is we look at it, we get the inquiry in, and what we're looking at is, as, as I said before, as much information as we can get as possible. So if there's a schedule of works available, we'd love that. If there's any links to planning portals, let us have it, let us have a look at the conditions. You know, we can look at the SIL payments. If there's any SIL payments on something, we can look at the section 106 that's available or that needs to be paid, and we'll work all of that into the review of the case when it comes over as an inquiry. When we look at an inquiry, we will go on Street View, we'll have a look at where the site or the property is, we'll have a look at the surrounding area, we'll do some comparables ourselves, we'll probably pull the land registry title, have a look at that, so that when our underwriter does have a look and decide to go ahead with a decision in principle, there is some well thought out and considered answers that have gone into it to get to the point where we're going to issue a dip. That will then go to either Crystal or the broker, they will have a look at it, providing they're happy with it. We have an app form, which we have to have filled in for a developer just because we've got to understand what they're doing. If it's a straightforward bridge, we don't typically need an application form, but we tend to use Crystal's form that they've got that satisfies everything that we've got. Once we get that, we will complete our due diligence and we will instruct evaluation on the site and we will issue a formal offer. Once the offer is signed and that comes back to Mint, our solicitors will agree the relevant legal documentation with the borrower solicitor. We'll get pre-loan inquiries out, we'll get those answered. Our underwriters will chase the solicitors constantly to see if they've had any responses to pre-loan inquiries. We'll then liaise with the broker so that everything keeps moving. We have an in-house lawyer who will get involved as and when needed. You know, She'll look at things that we can take a view on, she'll look at things that are absolutely necessary which just helps the process keep moving because typically sometimes legals can make deals run a little bit slower. Uh, obviously, we don't want that to happen because we want the cash to go out to the borrower as soon as possible so they can get the build up and running or they can get the refurb up and running. Uh, what we can do is send our solicitors funds on a held to order basis ahead of completion. So the borrower knows that the funds are sat there, we're just waiting on everything. So all the I's to be dotted, all the T's to be crossed for that money to be released to the borrower for him to go out or her to go out and do what they need to do. Um, we will work with the borrower, the broker, the introducer at every single step of the way. You know, that's from the initial inquiry to the actual redemption of the loan. And we'll make sure that we provide any support, any help when needed. You know, we'll push everything through to make sure that everybody is achieving the goals that they've set out at the beginning. So to recap on everything that I have spoke about at the moment, our rates typically start from 0.7 per month. We will go up to 70% loan to GDV, but that will depend on the borrower's assets and liabilities and the strength of the site that they're building. Typically, we will sit around 65% loan to GDV. Our loans are for up to 18 months. Our minimum loan size is £100,000 and our maximum is you know, we can go up to £5 million, we wouldn't on a single asset. So I think as a rule of thumb, probably one, one and a half million pounds on a development product. We wouldn't really want to go higher than that. We'll do up to eight houses in a scheme and up to 12 apartments. We will look at any type of house. So bungalow, terraced, townhouse, large square footage asset. 
Um, we've got one at the moment that's 5,000 square feet, which we have a developer working on. So we're, we're not afraid of doing those assets. It obviously just has to sit within our requirements and our criteria. Uh, credit wise, as I said, ideally we'd like clean credit profile, but if that's not possible and the client has a slightly colorful credit profile, that's okay. We would just need to understand it because we'll always be looking at the exit. If it's sale, it's probably not as much as an issue, but if it is refinance, we need to understand who is the onward lender, who is going to take us out. Uh, mortgage arrears we don't like just because the, obviously it puts the whole property at jeopardy if we're taking a second charge which we can do as well but again we will look at that on a case by case basis so as I said we are a private funder we're able to offer flexible handcrafted loans to each individual project that comes across our desk we'll work very very closely with everybody to get the deal across the line and for us the key thing we believe that is going to keep setting us apart is the relationships that we're building with our brokers, with our introducers and with our borrowers. You know, once you send that borrower over to Mint Bridging, you can rest assured that once the, those funds have drawn down, we will look after them. We'll make sure that they want to come back to us via you, obviously. And we'll also make sure that you're not going to get any phone calls that are going to be difficult. You can be as involved once the client is live with us as you want to be, or you can just hand it over and then pick up when it's exit time if you're looking to get them an exit by way of refinance or however that is. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Sinead. Well, that concludes today's webinar. Thank you all for tuning in and listening. And remember, if you do have any cases you'd like to discuss, please give the guys a call 01827 301070 and we'll be more than happy to discuss your needs with you. Thank you.